This is Dan and this is the Napkin Academy. Today we're going to be talking about how to draw anything. Take a moment and go grab a pencil and a sheet of paper and all drawing starts with just five simple shapes. Draw one with me. Let's draw a square. Now let's draw a circle. Now let's draw a triangle. Let's draw a line. And let's draw some kind of a blob. Those are the five basic shapes. If we can draw just those, we can draw anything. So how would we draw a bicycle? Well, as we can see, we start with circle number one. We then draw circle number two. We put a triangle in between them, just our basic shapes. A couple of lines, maybe another circle right here, another circle right here. Maybe a little triangle. Presto, we've got a bicycle. A city? Well, we see what a city is. It's basically a bunch of squares. We could do the same thing for a house. How do I draw my house? Well, maybe I draw a square, another square, another square, another square. Uh-oh, I'm going to get really fancy now. I'm going to put a triangle on top, maybe another square. I've got a house. How beautiful are these? Not particularly beautiful. Are they good enough for a presentation? absolutely they are perfect for a presentation let's give a big thumbs up there these are perfect drawings because everybody can see exactly what they are and the fact that we draw them live makes people very happy and I've got a question coming in from Oleg asking how to draw a dinosaur I don't know let's talk about a dinosaur I'm guessing we could draw a good Tyrannosaurus with a triangle a couple of legs here a couple of blobs there perhaps another triangle head like this another triangle, a big swoopy one on the back, and I'll bet we could even do more sort of a brachiosaurus. So let's start out with a, a square, four big fat square legs for our brachiosaurus. Let's put a circle on the back of that, and then we know a brachiosaurus has got a long swoopy neck, so let's do something like that. Put a circle on the end and a long swoopy tail on the other side give him a couple eyes brachiosaurus was never the smartest of the dinosaurs I guess so he's a happy one no he's not a very happy one because he's about to get eaten by the world's ugliest t-rex so there we've got some dinosaurs well here's how I suggest drawing people about as simple as you can possibly make it when we're drawing stick figures is we want to base it on thirds an accurate human drawing on the head I believe is about one seventh three four five six seven of the body of the full height something something about like this so that's more or less an accurate proportional human but when we're gonna draw our stick figures we forget this kind of proportion we're not interested in real pictures of people we're interested in people that look instantly like people the head is one-third the body the body is one-third the legs are one-third of the height we add a couple of arms and now we've got a pretty ugly but satisfactory stick figure I guess what I probably forgot there is I didn't really put in much of a neck so let's do another one let's make a little bit better stick figure and maybe drop the arms a little bit down now and there we get a slightly better stick figure and let's do one more let's do a stick figure that's uh, take that's at, uh, running let's do a little stick figure that's running so pieces remain more or less the same in proportion he's certainly he's walking at a rapid pace so stick figures are great the thing I really love about our little stick figures is with very little effort we can make them really sad oh my goodness what a sad stick figure or we can make them so happy that they are just bursting with energy or we can make them what else might we want to do uh, surprised oh okay that's a good one I think how would we do surprised well it depends this this person could be shocked this is terror surprise maybe because they've just seen a skeleton coming at them we could do uh, oh frustration oh I, I, I have an idea how to do frustration person is standing there very stiff arms straight up 
mouth is a solid line. Eyes are very small. I think we could do a kind of a grrr, some teeth showing. Ah, uh, and maybe a little bit of steam coming off. I think this person is quite frustrated. Either that or they've just stepped into a, <laughs> they're walking over burning coals. One or the other. A little bit of effort, you can show lots of things. But how do I draw a process? I can draw a process by putting together my boxes and my arrows and creating a timeline. And I might then illustrate that timeline by saying this is step one, two, three, and four. And perhaps in step one, I end up, I have a bunch of random pieces. In step two, I put those pieces together. In step three, perhaps, I'm just making this up as I go, I move that thing up. And then in step four, uh, what am I going to do with step four? Okay, step four, I raise it even higher. And now I've sent my thing all the way out to the moon. What about some other kinds of ideas? What about innovation? Maybe we could call it really rapid progress. Well, we might say that we start here with this square and then we change it a little bit and perhaps we bend it a little bit and turn it into a diamond and then perhaps we take that diamond and we round it out a little bit and then perhaps we turn that into a circle. So here's a way of illustrating with a picture what perhaps we might mean by innovation or progress. And I want to conclude by talking just a little bit about really pushing how do we illustrate ideas because it's really coming up with a good metaphor. So in our case of this word innovation, which has many, many meanings, what we might want to do is come up with our visual metaphor. But perhaps we start with a little caterpillar climbing on a branch. We know what happens is that that little caterpillar turns itself into a pupa and that little pupa turns itself into this incredibly gorgeous butterfly. How did that happen? Isn't that something? So here we have a metaphor for innovation or for change. And I want us to move a little bit now from just the simple building blocks of drawing our squares and our triangles and our circles and our smiley faces and stick figures into thinking about what larger picture do we draw using these pieces. So this is Dan. I've had thoroughly enjoyed working with you this morning. I hope you've enjoyed this session on how to draw anything. See you again on May 20th. This is Dan signing off from the Napkin Academy. Talk to you in two weeks.